Good afternoon, everyone. Today we have TrendWatch, and uh, it will be on our first of three webinars, which is called TouchPoint. Julie Smith Vincenti is with us, and she will be uh, giving us the presentation. If you have any questions about our upcoming webinars or on site registration for our fall market, it is taking place um, in October, October 13th through the 21st. And we would love to have you on site with us if that is something that you can possibly do. For that information, visit imchighpointmarket.com. Um, at this time, I'll turn it over to Julie. Great, thanks, Kim. And thanks to all of you for joining us here again on the small screen. Um, as you may have known, we were also uh, speaking to you virtually for the spring edition of Trend Watch. Thanks for coming back for fall 2020 and welcome to all of our new attendees. TrendWatch is a very popular program in the Design on High Point series. And during market, uh, we typically present three product vignettes as well as an at market seminar. In these extraordinary times, we've been able to pivot. And as Kim said, this is one of three webinars for which you can earn CEU credit. Um, it's three consecutive Wednesdays today, next Wednesday, and then the following Wednesday. And um, at the conclusion of each webinar, uh, you're going to be sent a uh, so sort of post event um, materials in which you can download a PDF that has all of the product that uh, was part of our curation for fall 2020. Um, just wanted uh, to, to make a point of sharing with you that um, as you're planning your high point market sourcing, whether that's going to be virtual or as Kim just shared, plenty of resources so that you can be attending in person, um, please be sure to look for a list of the confirmed open showrooms at highpointmarket.org and of course appointments are encouraged. So as we, oh dear, so I just want to get to my slides, which for some reason, Okay, so a little bit about how TrendWatch works. In advance of market, we identify three themes or moods, and we ask all of the tenants in IMC-owned properties to submit products within those themes. Um, I have the great honor of choosing those products. I've been in the industry for about 25 years. I'm a magazine editor. I own my own company, and I create custom trend programs for IMC. Um, we open our fall installment of TrendWatch with touch points. Uncertainty creates longing, a longing for familiarity, exploration, momentum, and progress. In times like these, we want comfort. Unlike past retreats inward, and I'm referring specifically to the sort of 1990s era cocooning, we're staying home now out of necessity. And rather than escape technology to feel safe and protected, as was sort of the the, um, the uh, a lot of the, the conversation around the cocooning trend, um, we instead are working simultaneously with technology. It's how we're working. It's how we're educating our children. It's how we're entertaining our friends and families. It's how we're fulfilling our need for community. So alongside these products that makes our homes perform well, and uh, alongside the very high tech um, devices that uh, are in nearly every one of our rooms in our home, we are adding, adding products that are helping to sort of soften the edges of that high-tech feel. And that's where home furnishings are coming into play. Touch points, if you will, that add intrigue and satisfy the senses. They evoke positive memories and they awaken imagination. In touch, experience and even nostalgia are sort of shaping the sort of next phase of personal expression. Now, the power of touch that's no surprise to anyone um, is um, quite effective and quite healing. Um, touch carries many benefits, emotional benefits, social benefits, physical benefits. And as we navigate these times in which we've been distanced from others and yet simultaneously are longing for togetherness, tactility, the touch, the feel of things, and the power it has to intrigue us and soothe us takes on new importance. Materials ultimately drive tactility. 
So here's some great um, examples of how wool, for instance, has undergone this sort of transformative um, role and uh, performs quite a bit of function alongside its tactility. Now, the image that you're looking at of that ice cream parlor was uh, featured in Interior Design Magazine. Each one of those sort of ice-like structures helps to absorb sound. If you look down at the bottom, there's an example of a wool in um, enclosed sort of sitting area in which the um, material itself will helps to have uh, sound absorbing properties. And the same with that sort of light fixture that you see up at the top, where in the right setting, um, wool material helps to absorb sound. Tile and the importance of this category in the decade ahead is also helping to speak to this sort of tactile touch point experience. Um, it's really exciting category um, and I've been following it pretty closely over the course of the last uh, few months. Um, beyond just a simple backsplash, um, these are texture rich tiles that create either a high end accent wall, a sort of alternative to the removable wallpapers or murals that we can create digitally. Instead, this sort of stone high-end tile, tactile experience that invites the, the person in the room to sort of come in and touch and feel and to be soothed by that accent wall. Uh, same with the sort of raised asymmetrical lines in each of the tiles that you see um, in the image on the top right, as well as the fun, great pattern and um, invitation to sort of enter the space um, with the image on the, on the left. Stone and materials that have been carved or formed to mimic stone are also part of this tactile experience and we're seeing quite an uptick in designs like this um, moving into the seasons ahead. So carved surfaces or surfaces that looked car carved, uh, taking on a very elegant mood. This is a new collection from um, Callista, it's called Argile. And as the designer, um, the firm that designed this collection says, um, a textural gradient goes from smooth and polished edges to a carved surface inspired by woodcuts or carved or tooled clay. Obviously, technology, as you heard me say, is something that we are looking to um, enhance our homes. And uh, no better example than 3D printing and its influence um, in showing how you can uh, create in unique and beguiling tactile experiences, touch points. Um, surface creates movement in this particular series of vases by Karen Young. Um, static objects can be made to look as if they're moving. At the same time, you absolutely want to reach in and just touch these vases. They have a gorgeous matte finish to them. Bas relief in general goes a long way to create a tactile or touch point experience. Here's a great millennials focused tabletop collection. Um, it's called It's My Match. Um, in addition to the relief pattern, which adds interesting surface appeal, the finishes in this collection are unique in that you can actually write on the exterior with a pencil, write messages um, to guests or to those you're entertaining, and then those easily wash off this polished, not glazed surface. Bas relief, as I said, um, certainly goes a long way to create a tactile experience. These are um, hand-carved wood tables from Ethnocraft that sort of speaks to that tactility for sure. And also organic patterns in general and our love of organic materials, our tendency to be bringing the nature indoors, certainly speaks to this touch point theme that we've put together for you for fall. And here's some examples in which you see um, evoking organic textures like cooled lava or sea foam or unpolished stone. And indeed, this sort of fiery tactile surface that you get um, as you burn um, wood to create this sort of ember. There's actually the, the Japanese art. It, it's called um, shushugiban which is actually a siding treatment in which you burn the wood so that it so that, that charring actually preserves the wood. Well, there have been never a number of instances over the last few seasons where we've seen that external siding material brought indoors because it has such a rich and rewarding tactile um, experience. 
We've been looking at ink designs, designs that have these wonderful linear, one-of-a-kind sort of qualities. Look how having the ink appear to sort of just drip off the side of this area rug sort of speaks to the, text, the texture, the tactile experience of this design. Our friends over at Curry Company, um, specifically Cecil Adams, who heads up their design, has kind of given this um, uh, some context with regard to these luxurious materials and the sort of soft edges, this, um, how important textures are moving into the seasons ahead. You see that in this wonderful pleated design. It's actually pleated metal to form the series chandelier. I love the name of the finish on this. It's called sugar white. At the same time, you see the, um, a lost wax process uh, to create this jackfruit bronze vase that's in fact watertight. Pleating actually is pretty key and as we were reaching out to tenants to submit for our touch point theme, we specifically asked for designs that showcase pleating. Um, here's a recent installment from an accent decor showroom where you see how these folds and these sort of um, low tech, very common materials, cardboard, paper, and even a sort of cellophane paper are molded to create this really um, captivating vine that was sort of wove its way throughout their entire showroom. Um, a very organic shape, a very organic texture um, and to, to create this sort of sprawling vine. So let's get into then the products that were part of our, our creation, our, excuse me, our uh, curation. So here we have the pleated glass bowls in brown and beige from Global Views. They're a fine example of these pleating textures to really create a, a wonderful artful touch point in the home. Um, these are handmade in Murano, Italy, and there are three sizes total. Um, even uh, paper craft um, to create a very textured tactile experience. This is the Dragon's Tail Lamp by Louisa Robinson. Um, its hand-folded paper sections are attached to form this tail-like, beautiful, artful design. Now, for those of you who've been coming to either the Trend Watch or our, our cousin program, First Look at Las Vegas Market, um, we've been uh, talking about this idea of curating our homes, those one or two artful pieces that elevate our space from being the mere room we spend time in to this almost home at home gallery experience. So it's these very textured tactile designs that can go a long way to creating that mood. Perfect example of that here. You saw me give examples of how bas relief in general creates a very tactile experience. Here's a lamp from our interiors. It's called the Edwards lamp. And um, it's made, the base is white rice stone. And what you see is an African Kuba cloth inspired pattern that's carved into the base of this, um, this lovely table lamp. Um, in wall decor, mixed media and layering or collage certainly goes a long way to create depth and dimension. Um, in this particular design from Celadon Art, it's a series I think of four it's actually wood veneer cutouts that are layered and hand applied with, um, there's a hand applied gold gilded texture. And so these, these pieces seem to float off the sort of base um, art paper um, on which they're attached to create, again, just depth, dimension, and a tactile experience. Speaking of tactility, our good friends over at Stephen Wilson um, Studios provided um, these lovely pieces. If you've been to the suites at Market Square, there's no chance that you've missed this company. What this firm does is they take um, luxury packaging materials and they embroider designs into them. They attach um, hand, uh, uh, handmade patches, or in this case is these beautiful butterflies um, that are stitched onto the packaging to create this mixed media, very dimensional wall decor. Um, so the pieces that you're seeing here are Gucci Rain Butter Variation 2020. The embroidery stitched directly into the luxury box with embroidered um, butterflies mounted in relief. The Gucci Heart Scribble, you can almost just, you want to touch your hand onto the screen. You can see the sort of the yarns that have been stitched into this packaging to uh, create this piece of wall decor. I also included the piece on the far right is part of a new um, giftable line that the company's launched. These are their petites. These are smaller five inch by five inch works that are behind 
um, a frame uh, uh, framed behind acrylic, um, two inch deep acrylic frames and um, it's embroidered scarves or packaging materials. Very giftable, very collectible indeed. Now whether it actually is a mixed media piece or a print of a mixed media piece, again you get the sense of how there's great dimen dimension, extra tactility. These are two designs from RFA Decor. These are hand embellished G clay on fine art paper. Um, originals, um, the originals in mixed media artwork. Um, on the left is henna, and on the right is Ode to a French Girl. Um, if you are a fan of the, um, the uh, uh, cinema and uh, classic movies, you know the red ballet shoes are certainly an homage to um, cinema lovers indeed. Um, we also have some great um, plaster effects that even in a print of an original work, create some of that depth and dimension. The pieces on the left are from Left Bank Art. It's a uh, four-part series. It's uh, prints on canvas and capture the feel and the touch and the look of the original piece. At the same time, you see some of that similar texture and pattern in this great emery chest from Studio A. The top is smoke eucalyptus veneer with a wire brush treatment. And then look at the beautiful facades with that textured resin um, on the door fronts and on the cabinet itself. Another example, a more contemporary look. Um, this piece is from BDI. It's a bar cabinet. It's the Tanami Bar. It has these wonderful um, sculpted three-dimensional door fronts. And then the piece on the right is from Regina Andrew Design. It's actually metal, but it's specifically finished and molded to represent or to, to mimic um, paper mache. Certainly when we're talking about tactility and texture, we'd be remiss if we didn't include a piece of Raku art. Uh, these are from Studio A, these sort of folded ceramic designs. Um, it's also like the, um, like the um, shushugiban that I mentioned in terms of burning the wood, uh, charring the wood. Um, this is also a Japanese firing technique. Um, it creates crackled or metal glazed surfaces and um, each has this kind of this, this low firing technique uh, results in each piece having that one of a kind look. Similar sort of finish appeal on this piece from Arteriors. This is the Damien Terracotta Tubular Sculpture. It has this beautiful textured matte charcoal finish. It's in fact watertight, so it's both a sculpture and a vase. We also have this lovely stone material. I want you to take note of the sort of linear um, feel that you get on this mirror. This is called Deborah Mirror. Uh, the the um, chiseled uh, marble crowns. You can hang this 46 inch piece um, either horizontally or vertically, but take note too of that linear pattern on the back. I'm going to show some examples of why linear patterns are sort of instrumental to our uh, touch point theme for fall 2020. Wanted to also call some attention to a couple color palettes that sort of dovetail with our touch points theme. So this is from Sherwin-Williams 2021 Color Mix Forecast. This is Sanctuary. Um, the inspiration here is very much Scandinavian design, minimalism, muted hues, understated lines with rich texture. That's sort of the key takeaway. And if you take a moment to just look in the lower right-hand corner, Urbane Bronze, this is the color that Sherwin-Williams, I think just yesterday, announced as its color of the year for 2021. Um, to use their language, urbane bronze might be a color rooted in nature, but it also has a unique ability to ground a room through organic appeal. And so um, this color features quite prominently um, in their 2021 color mix forecast. And ironically, in a, a beautiful um, moment of the stars aligning, it also works um, extremely well in our touch point story. Here's some examples of those color swatches from the Sherwin-Williams color mix put in play alongside three of the products that made our curation for fall 2020. So this is the Valise Multi Patchwork uh, Pillow from Classic Homes. Whether it comes through or not, there was actually a hand-guided embroidered um, texture on the surface of these pillows, just again to sort of en enhance the tactile appeal. 
I want to just take a moment. You might hear my doorbell go off. I see the UPS driver coming up my driveway. Um, at this, and the bottom, um, you see this lovely um, rust finish from. Um, you see this beautiful rust finish on the Norman fiberglass planters. Um, it has a sort of um, contemporary feel softened by this rust finish. And then lastly, the um, area rug from Unique Loom. Again, taking note of those linear patterns in this kind of woven presentation, what may or may not come through on the screen is that each of those ivory stripes is a raised pile. This is from the Sabrina Soto rug collection from Unique Looms. Next up, just to see that palette also put in play um, is, uh, I've added a couple blue colors from the Sherwin-Williams Color Mix 2021. Here's some pillows from Peacock Alley that again speak to that muted sort of serene um, mood. Metallic finishes certainly go a long way to invite touch and to um, and, and add to surface appeal. So we have here an Inspire rug from Cass Rugs. It has these lovely metallic highlights throughout. And again, with that linear pattern in this sort of unique sort of woven way, takes on a very modern appeal in this, in this finish combination. The um, Wave Aluminum Vessels from Sagebrook Home that has a wonderful sort of pinched and folded form that really begs almost to be touched. And then the same too with hair on hide, which is absolutely enhances the surface of any, uh, whether in an area rug or whether it's on drawer, door or drawer fronts on a, on a case good. Um, this piece here is from Saddleman and it has this wonderful metallic neutral combination. Another example of these linear um, patterns, this being a more abstract example, each of those sort of scribbles, if you will, this is from Jaipur, um, this is the free verse light handcrafted area rug, has a sort of raised sort of surface to it, really underscores the hand craftsman, um, hand craftsmanship of this particular design. Here's another example of that raised high-low pile, just adding surface appeal, a touch point in the home, if you will. This is from Amity Home. This is their Hudson area rug. It's a hand-loomed loop pile rug and a couple different, um, a couple of different colorways available. But again, take note again of these linear sort of scribbled or doodled designs. In this case, a kind of hatch mark motif. Um, another example of this high-low pile, here's a great rug, um, Avalon indoor outdoor area rug from Classic Home. This is made from 100% recycled bottles. Fringe is so key in creating um, wonderful designs, not only in apparel, but certainly in home furnishings as well. Unbraided jute dangles freely from the oval perimeter of the fringe mirror. Um, it has a wonderful relaxed kind of vibe. It measures about 43 inches high and nothing says warm and cozy and tactile experience like pom-poms and a chunky knit. This is the Isla Throw from Amity Home. We have another palette um, to um, showcase some swatches from. This is actually from Composed, which is a Pantone 2021 palette, and just wanted to show you a couple of examples of our selections against that palette put in play. You have this wonderful Angora pillow with this fun modern vibe and this sort of chunky knit. Um, that's from Jaipur. And then the throw on the bottom is from Nurasan, and you can see, I hope Hopefully on your screen that wonderful sort of exposed fringe detail. And speaking of fringe, um, talk about uh, uh, Tove Furniture's Atola Cream Tassel Lamp. It's draped in luxurious tassels. It's really an attention-getting piece, a lot of fun. Um, it, it's um, available as a pendant as well as as a table lamp, absolutely a unique addition to your home. So to our designs from Aviva Stanoff. This is her modern dream catcher pillow. And if you handwork collection, um, it's made one of a kind um, what, by hand in the studios in the United States. Touch them and you will feel how each object is engraved with exquisite details exactly as it is in nature. 
We'd be remiss if we talked about tactility and didn't talk about metallic finishes. Here's three great examples. Um, the table, the console tables from Global Views. This is the 72 inch wide deco console. And I think even on your screen, regardless of the resolution you're looking at, you can see this lovely combination of how pattern, form, and texture or finish come together to create a real statement um, statement piece indeed. Then that sort of feminine mesh-like effect that you see in Sun Pan's uh, pendant. The pillow is from Cloud9. It incorporates not only um, hand-worked velvet, but also these wonderful bead, um, almost aerial landscape kind of textures. For those of us who've been in the industry now for a few years, you know that concrete has really uh, crossed the threshold from the outdoors to the indoors. Here's some examples of where concrete or material really speak to tactility, a unique touch point in your home. So the castle pendant collection is from Seed Designs. The sconce on the right is from Jamie Young. It's actually uh, gray plaster coated and uh, has a really wonderful finish and texture to it. The concrete urn is from Tree Masters, a friend of the Trend Watch program indeed. So speaking of concrete material brought from the indoor, uh, outdoors, indoors, um, woven materials are absolutely um, uh, uh, finding their place in the home indeed. And so designs that you might have maybe five to 10 years ago thought only had a place outside, absolutely earn their spot indoors. Here's a perfect example. Cane line, this peacock lounge chair is woven with an indoor outdoor material. The seat cushion uh, is black leather and it's standard with this design. Absolutely looks great in a modern home. Here's a fun piece from Jaliza, uh, another woven design that um, uh, has its place outside, but that woven um, uh, jute material absolutely could make for a really fun installation indoors as well. Essentials for Living has a couple new finishes. Um, the one, the chair on the left is called the Lattice Outdoor Wing Chair, um, and the finish is called White Speckle Flat Rope. And then the chair on the right is, um, it's a one of the, it's um, a best-selling dining chair design for them. The finished combination you see here is new. It's the combination of that rope speckle white alongside a gray. Absolutely a fun woven material here from Modway. This is the Florence Ottoman and it has um, a stain resistant velvet, velvet. Perfect design for the family room, very family friendly design and the very artful woven material that you see here in Arterior's Eleanor chair. Um, the company, um, when they submitted this product, they said two words, sculpted and voluminous. Absolutely. Um, a gorgeous design that has wonderful curves, wonderful lines, comfortable at all sort of angles. It's um, leather and rattan. And here's another wonderful piece that combines um, this sort of woven material for a relaxed yet also elegant presentation. This is from Hooker Furniture. This is inspired by Malibu in a sort of relaxed California. This is, um, this bed wears the, um, a finish called Cliffside and it has cane and jute rope details. In our sort of bohemian driftwood finishes, what we're noticing moving into 2020 is a little more hang up in the designs. That references a little bit more of white, essentially, that accentuates the grain. Uh, the chair on the left is from Bungalow 5. That's called the Hue Lounge Chair. Meanwhile, the coffee table with this reclaimed acacia wood is from Dovetail. At the same time, we have these heavy texture, heavy finished um, designs, which still are resonate in 2020, yet are more less less gray and more white moving into the fall season. We also have these very sort of low tech natural finishes, the very simplistic, very simplistic, very simple forms, and yet um, absolutely invite um, touch and invite a tactile um, experience indeed, very smooth. Um, that concludes the products that we made in our curation. Just a couple of other, I'm, I'm going to go really quickly now, just a couple of other trend notes. And these are um, ideas and themes that we'll be referencing next Wednesday. 
in our Trend Watch segment called Pod, and then two Wednesdays from today in our Trend Watch segment called Pro Prologue. Um, butterflies as a motif. Still want to talk about florals and that sort of cottage charm. We're seeing a lot in the way of cage designs. We're going to talk about that uh, next week in Pod. We're going to talk about mint and why this color is important in 2020, 2021. We're going to look at a Pantone palette called Terracotta. We're going to look at a Pantone palette called Polychrome. And we're also going to talk about these interesting times that we find ourselves in. This is a piece of um, wall decor that when it came in, I thought was very appropriate for me to include in the presentation. This is from Left Bank Art, and it's, it's, the, it's a series, and it's called In a Barbie World. We're going to talk a little bit next week about how um, the current times that we're in have absolutely accelerated our shift to online retail. Here's the visual. So just as a reminder, that's a week from today, same time, uh, one o'clock Eastern. In two weeks, we're gonna talk about Prologue, which looks at millennials and the, some of the decisions that they're making as they go to feather their first permanent nest, their first single family home. And I wanna thank you very much for your time. Hope to see you next week. <laughs>